much, uh, Mr. Chair, for holding this hearing, and thank you for each of the witnesses for your great testimony today. Arizona generally, and my district specifically in the East Valley, have been at the epicenter for the development and testing of autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles have the potential to transform our transportation system, improve mobility for vulnerable populations and those who face barriers to transportation, enhance vehicle safety, reduce vehicle crashes and deaths, increase productivity. At the same time, we need to recognize that AVs have the potential to alter our workforce. Uh, my questions, the first one is for Mr. Ermson, Mr. Farah, and Mr. Spear. Uh, choose if you want to each of you answer or just one of you. How, how are you engaging with truck drivers who have extensive experience driving millions of miles as this technology is being developed? So uh, truck drivers are critical to how we develop this technology. Uh, today we have 40 some of them on staff at Aurora. Uh, it's important to me they're actually employees of the company. Uh, they own equity in the company. As the company is successful, we anticipate them uh, benefiting from that success as well. Uh, if you look at someone like Tom Randall, who's on our staff, he's driven for 40 years. He sees the opportunity to introduce new technology into a career that he has loved. Uh, and that experience translates directly into the way we develop the technology. His quality driving on the road is what we model the behavior and what the Aurora driver learns from so that they can drive well and safely down the road. Mr. Fair. Congressman, thank you very much and appreciate your leadership on, on this policy area. Um, I will say that I think today's hearing is an incredibly important moment because we need to be clear as an industry that the autonomous vehicle industry needs truck drivers. We, we see a, a strong role for coexistence. Uh, this is something where we, we are not a panacea. We want to be a tool to help with supply chain challenges. And so uh, recognize that, that, that certainly there are questions out there and we're eager to have the opportunity today to clarify that. That's right. Mr. Speer. Well, there's skills. We're teaching drivers to operate at a much higher level. These are marketable skills, these are portable skills, but we're enabling these drivers to be more aware, more responsive. Some of the most basic things that we've talked about, like automated emergency braking to adaptive cruise control to more integrated systems. We're teaching not only the drivers, but the technicians how to service this equipment. These are all things that are gonna allow increased pay. These are all things that are gonna make this workforce more talented and marketable. These are all good things. We should not stymie innovation. We should encourage it. So that federal framework that is performance-based is gonna help our workforce by giving them more skills. The quality of life, too, I'd point out, is we lose $74.5 billion a year sitting in traffic. That's 425,000 drivers sitting idle for an entire year. Connectivity? Vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, these are all things that will eliminate that congestion and improve the quality of life and also improve our economy. So there's a tremendous role for automation and connectivity to really impact our workforce as well as our economy. Uh, similar question, uh, does the current workforce have the skills necessary to operate automated technology or will fleets need to undertake significant retraining or recruitment of new drivers? Mark. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I, listen, I, I think our workforce is very excited about giving them new skills. We're, we're giving them an opportunity to optimize their performance. If you're teaching a driver how to operate an 80,000 pound vehicle with more command, more control, more awareness, more responsiveness, they're going to be better at their job. The motoring public is going to be safer. And I would incorporate equality between commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles. Two thirds of the accidents that involve our trucks are caused by passenger vehicles. They're speeding and they're texting. They're not paying attention and they're running into the vehicle. AEB, connectivity, these are all things that are gonna save lives. We wanna take a massive cut out of those 40,000 fatalities. And we believe that our workforce being properly trained is gonna have a measurable impact on doing just that. All right, Ms. Ferrer. Congressman, I, I should just clarify that I, I think what's important to understand here is that all of the jobs needed to maintain trucks today, th these are ones that we still need in the future, but we also need additional jobs specifically at these companies. We need people that are helping to maintain the fleet, work with the technology. What we see across the board at uh, members of Avia is that they are working very closely in their communities on, on training programs so that they can have that talent work for their workforce. And so that's just another way we're adding more jobs. That's great. Mr. Armstrong, please. Yeah, and just to... Uh, Fall off for that. So we've concrete, concretely, we've worked with the Pittsburgh Technical College where we put in place a training program for vehicle service technicians. 
Uh, we've worked with Gallatin College where we're working on sensor technician uh, accreditation and education. And then importantly, at the company itself, we've created pathways for folks to move from our operations team into other roles of the company, program management and other aspects of it to create that mobility for these critical employees for us. That's great. Looks like I ran out of time here, so I'll uh, submit my final question in, in, uh, for a written answer. I yield back 